So here we go. So what we want to look at today, we want to look at how to solve this kind of what started last Friday and just didn't get a chance to do very much of it. So we'll talk about it today. This is a really good way to end module four though because it's dealing with solving systems like we did with the linear systems on Friday, only these are linear quadratic systems. So we're going to have to also solve some quadratic equations, which gives you some good practice solving quadratic equations, which is a big deal in math. So what about something like this? We've got this quadratic equation and then this linear equation, and we're going to have to find the solutions. Let's first of all just think about what could happen with this. The equation, if we graph a quadratic equation, we all know that we're getting a parabola, right? Mm -hmm. A linear equation is represented by a line. So what are the different ways that a line could intersect a parabola? Okay, it could in lots of different directions, but it could intersect it how many times? Two. two. It might look like this, right, where I get two separate intersections, right? That's one possibility. Another possibility would be what if it just grazed it and there was only one solution? That's another possibility. Or the third possibility would be what? No solutions. It just misses it completely and there are no solutions, right? Those are all possibilities. Okay, so we're trying to find all of the, and the instructions for these kinds of problems say, uh, find all real solutions of the linear quadratic system algebraically. Enter solutions as ordered pairs if multiple solutions exist. Separate the ordered pairs with commas. Uh, and if no real solutions exist, enter false. So we're only looking for real solutions. That's helpful. That's going to that's gonna make some of these problems a little bit easier. Okay. So this first one then, how are we going to do this? Well, there's a couple things that are helpful. First of all, always start with the quadratic equation. And one good piece of advice is it's almost always easier to substitute for the variable that's not being squared. So what we'd like to do, the variable that's not being squared here is y. So that means we'd like to solve the linear equation for y and then substitute. Okay? It already is solved for y. So we'll put a box around it because it's already isolated for y, and that's our substitution equation. And then that's what we'll substitute into there, right? And so what does our first equation become then? x squared equals, instead of a y, what's it going to be? 3x. 3x. Okay? And then what do we do to solve a quadratic equation? We always set it equal to 0. Unless there's only a single x up there that we can isolate, that's not going to happen probably for us on this assignment. It might happen once, but it's unlikely. So we'll subtract 3x from both sides and get x squared minus 3x equals 0, right? Once we get it into standard form, then we get to make a choice. We get to, our, our first and best option, if it works, the easiest way would be to look for magic numbers. which is the same thing as factoring. And then option number two would be, if that doesn't work, then probably quadratic formula is what we're going to want to do. Or the other op option would be uh, complete the square. But most of you, I'm, I'm sure, going to want to use quadratic formula instead of completing the square. So what about this one, though? This is one where I can factor. Right. In fact, this is the easiest kind of factoring to do because there's a common factor of what? What could I undistribute from both of those terms? There's no number, but what do they each have? X. They each have an x, yeah. So I could undistribute an x from each of those two terms. And if I undistribute an x, what am I left with? x times what is x squared? x x times what is negative 3x? Yeah, everybody see that? So I can undistribute an x from both terms, and now it's factored. Okay, that's good, because now that makes it really easy to answer this. We just have to use the zero product property. A product of two factors equals zero when? What's the only way that a product can equal zero? Say it again. If, if you're multiplying by, you're right, if you're multiplying by zero, right? I think that's what you're implying. 
So that means either this factor has to be zero. Well, what value of x makes that factor zero? x equals zero. So that's one solution. Or what's the value of x that makes that factor zero? Three. All right, so those are the two x values. I've just got to go find the values of y that go with them. Where would I do that? Yeah, right there, right? I'm just going to plug in these x values and find out which y values go with them. I'll go back to either of the first two equations, but go to the boxed equation, because the boxed equation is already solved for y, isn't it? So if I plug in x equals 0, what value of y am I going to get? 0. If I plug in x equals 3, what value of y am I going to get? Yeah. So my solutions then in Moodle would just be the ordered pair 0, 0, or put a comma. The other solution is x equals 3, y equals 9. So that's what I'd enter in Moodle. OK? That's it. Let's do another one. How about this one? Which variable is being squared? Y. y. So then which variable should I substitute for? X. X. Which means I'm going to go to the linear equation and solve for x. Already done, right? So I can just put a box around that equation, and that's my substitution equation, right? So then if I substitute, what do I get? I get the quantity y plus 2 squared equals negative x. But instead of x, I'm going to put the quantity what? negative 3y minus 10. That's my substitution. Everybody see? So what do I have to do then? What's next? OK, I've got to, uh, well, I've, I've got to simplify this, don't I? There's, there's some work to be done here. But ultimately, what I want to do is I want to get, I want to get all the y terms on one side, put it in standard form. But to get there, I've got to do some stuff. Right, I've got to expand that out, and I've got to distribute the negative sign, and then collect all the terms on one side. Everybody agree? Okay. So what about over here on the right side? That's the easy one, so let's do that first. If I distribute the negative 1, what's it going to give me? Positive 3y plus 10. Okay, what about the other side? I want to show you a really good trick, so watch this very closely. You don't have to do it this way, but it's highly recommended. If I have something like y plus 2 squared, what can we do with that? So y plus 2 squared equals. Here's the pattern you can always use. If we have two things that are being added, and I'm going to square that. Uh, and let's, I guess you me a favor. Put all your phones away, please. I just, I just think it's going to be way better for you and for me. Take a second put all those away. Uh, if I have something like this, something plus something quantity squared, and, and I, I want to expand that out, I have the option, of course, of just writing it twice and distributing. So one thing I could do is I could write y plus 2 squared as y plus 2 times y plus 2 and distribute it, and collecting like terms, right? Uh, that works, but it's, it's a little bit of work. There's an easier way. Here's the pattern. Whenever I'm squaring out a product of something plus something else, it always works out to be the first thing squared plus 2 times the first thing times the second thing plus the second thing squared. Every time, that's the pattern. So the quantity a plus b squared is just a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared. So then y plus 2 squared is going to equal what? What's the first thing? Yeah, y, and I square that, I get y squared. Plus 2 times the first thing times the second thing. 2 times y times 2 is what? 2 times y times 2. 4y, four, four right? Everybody agree? 2 times y times 2 is the same thing as 4 times y plus y squared. Oh, I'm sorry, plus 2 squared, which is 4. OK? So that's all there is to it. So I can turn this thing into then, using that pattern, y squared plus 4y plus 4, right? OK, so now what? Subtract the 3y. Good. 
we've got to get everything over to this side. So we'll subtract 3y and subtract 10 from both sides. So that gives me 0 on the right, which is good. On the left, I get y squared plus y minus 6 equals 0. And so now we get to take a choice. Can we use magic numbers? Can you find, if I'm using magic numbers, so if I'm going to try to break this apart using magic numbers, what do the magic numbers have to multiply to? Negative 6. Negative 6. Right, they've got to multiply to the constant and add to, to 1. Right, whatever the number is in front of y in this case. So are there numbers that multiply to negative 6 and add to 1? Yeah. What are they, Jessica? Negative 2 and 3. Very good. So plus 3 and negative 2. Good. And so that tells me that what's this solution? What value of y is going to make that factor equal to 0? Negative 3. Or y equals 2. Right? Okay. Now, did I have to use magic numbers? No. I could have used, for example, the quadratic formula. It would have been fine, but it's just overkill. I don't need it. Right? It would have worked, though. I'll show you it'll work. If this is the equation I'm trying to solve, right there, I could just use my quadratic formula. Only this time I've got x's, y's instead of x's. Big deal, right? I would still, this would just tell me that quadratic formula would just say y equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, where what's a? Y. Well, a is 1. a is going to be the coefficient of the squared variable, right? So a is 1. What's b? 1, because that's the number in front of y. And c is? Negative 6. So if I were to plug all that stuff in, what would I get? Well, negative b would be the opposite of b, so that's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared. 1 squared, right, is 1, minus 4 times 1 times negative 6. Look what I did. When I, when I multiplied by the negative, I made that positive. Because negative times negative is positive. All divided by 2 times 1. Well, what is that? Negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 24 is what? 1 plus 24. Say it again. 1 plus 24? 25. All over 2. So that gives me negative 1 plus or minus. What's the square root of 25? Okay, so if we take the plus sign then, that gives me y equals negative 1 plus 5 is what? Negative 1 plus 5? 4. 4 divided by 2? OK, if we take the minus sign, y is negative 1 minus 5 is? Negative 1 minus 5, negative 6 divided by 2? OK. So either way, right, those are the two answers we get. Right. Isn't that easier, though, to do it this way if we can't? OK, and then what do I do? Where am I going to go to, to find the corresponding values of x? So I found my two solutions for y, but I need ordered pairs. What are the x values that go with it? Where would I find out? Yeah, go back to the original equations, and let's use the box, right? So what do I get? If y is negative 3, what's the x value? Negative 3 times negative 3 is? Minus 10, negative 1. So there's one ordered pair. If y is 2, negative 3 times 2 is minus 10. OK, there we go. So those are my solutions. i got to put the x first, right? So negative 1, negative 3, or negative 16, positive 2. OK, all right. Uh, I'm going to skip up. I'm going to, yeah, I want to do this one. Okay, this one looks a little harder. 
it is slightly harder, but not bad. What's the variable that's being squared here? The y. So what do I want to substitute for? X. OK, so then that means we'll put a box around our substitution equation. And we're going to substitute for x, right? So then our original equation becomes the quantity y minus 2 squared equals negative the quantity minus 1 third y plus 6. OK, so on the left side, let's use our pattern. What am I going to get on the left side, carry? Do you remember the pattern? If I have y minus 2 squared, what do I do to expand that out? y squared, good, plus, plus 2 times 2 times the first thing plus the, times the second thing, right? So 2 times y times negative 2, what's that? Negative 4y, good. So minus 4y, and then what's the last one going to be? Uh, 4, negative 2 squared is positive 4. So plus 4. And the last one will always be positive, won't it? Because you're always squaring something, right? The middle one could be negative if that's a minus sign. OK, that's fine. What about on this side? If I distribute the negative, what am I going to get? OK, positive, good. Positive 1 third y minus 6. OK, that's a little bit inconvenient. It's a little bit inconvenient because Look at this. We've got this fraction. So remind me, how do we clear fractions? And we want to get rid of fractions. What do we do? Reverse operation. OK, but we can't just change that one term. Well, you've worked with problems that you change the fractions. OK, we're going to, right, we're going to multiply something through by both sides to clear all the fractions. Remember this trick. OK, how many fractions appear up there? One. Just one. If there were more than one, we could still do this. We want to find the least common denominator of all the fractions. Well, there's only one fraction, and it's a 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides through by 3. What's that do? If I distribute this 3 all the way through, what do I get? 3 What about over here? What's 3 times 1 third? 1. So that just gives me a y, doesn't it? Right? 3 times negative 6. Okay, look at that. I know that seemed like a lot of stuff to do, but it's totally worth it because we get rid of the fraction. Right? It makes the problem so much easier to deal with. So now we'll push everything over to this side, right? We'll subtract y from both sides and we'll add 18 to both sides. And then what do we get? If we do that stuff, we get 0 on the right. We get 3y squared minus 13y plus 30 equals 0. Now, that one is, we didn't want to try factoring, right? Because we've got a, a, a number in front of y squared and we're stuck with it. So we don't want to factor. We're just going to plug this into the quadratic formula, right? So to plug this into the quadratic formula, what are the values of a, b, and c? a is 3, three b is negative 13, and C is 30. Good. And we're just going to plug into the quadratic formula then. So we get Y equals negative B. There's our quadratic formula, right? So what's negative B? 13. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. What's 13 squared? Negative 13 squared. Same thing as 13 squared. 169. Okay. Minus... 4 times A times C, okay, divided by 2 times A, 2 times 3 is 6. But I want you to notice something here. I don't have to go any further. How come? There's something going on here that allows me to just stop and say no solution. What's it going to be? The, well, true, it's by itself, but what's going on? Now, I want you to look, look back at the, at the description. It said we want to find all real solutions, right? How do you know? What's, I can tell right now that I'm not going to get real solutions. 
How? Look right here. What what kind of number is that guaranteed to be? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be negative. Tell me why it's going to be negative. Well, because I'm subtracting which 169 minus. Now, think about this product. 4 times 3 times 30. So 12 times 30. 12 times 30, is that going to be bigger than 169? Way bigger, right? Yes. So I'm subtracting something bigger than 169 from 169. So I know that that's going to be negative, And it's inside the radical. So we're done. We're done. We're going to get I's in our answer. And we didn't ask for I's. We only wanted real solutions. And so the answer to this one would just be false. false. Right? Everybody see that? OK? There it is. OK, last one I want to show you. I'm going I'm to give you another really good trick on something. So the last two problems on this assignment, they, they want you to find all the real solutions, but they want you to enter them as ordered pairs rounded to the nearest hundredth. So that means you could just find these graphically. OK? Uh, you could do these on our graphing calculator. But what if those were y's that were being squared? Then you really couldn't very easily. But there is a good little trick here. Have you guys ever used the Desmos calculator? OK, the Desmos calculator is amazing. It'll change your life. It's great stuff. So the Desmos calculator, if you just go to desmos.com, and all you got to do is just type in Desmos. If you just type in Desmos, it'll, it'll pop, probably pop up with the Desmos graphing calculator as one of your options. Or just go to desmos.com. Then all you have to do is type in these equations just the way they are. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to isolate y into the calculator. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Watch how this works. If I just literally go to row 1 and type in, open up a set of parentheses, type in x minus 1, go outside the parentheses and hit caret 2. Look what it's doing. It's actually graphing as I type this stuff. This is amazing. Then I'll just go over and put equals y minus 3, and there it is. That red parabola is the first equation. Hit Enter to go down to a new row, and just type x plus y equals negative 9, and there's the line. Well, do they ever intersect? No. They don't, right? So the answer would be false. OK, let's get one that does intersect. How about something like this? OK, so let's go back up to this guy and, and try this one. So now we get the quantity x minus 3 squared equals y plus 3. OK, so there's the parabola. Let's do the line x plus y equals 11. Okay, that one does intersect. Where does it intersect? Well, it intersects there. So if I just click on that, it tells me the coordinates. So that's one of my answers. Uh, one answer is going to be at, whoops, one answer is going to be at, uh, what is that? Point, I have to round to two decimal places. So 5.85. Everybody agree? Comma 5.85. One five, everybody agree? Yeah, this one wants you to round to the nearest hundredth on this problem. Okay, that's why you can do this. And then the other one is right up there at that point. So it's at negative zero point eight five, comma eleven point eight five. Everybody agree? There it is. How easy is that? Easy. Go. It's still What's that? It's still what do you mean? It still gave me the answer down here? Yeah, I had it right, though, right? It just always gives it back to you whether you got it right or not. But it says you got it. Ah, OK, have at it. <laughs>